2 Corinthians. So, 1 and 2, 2 Corinthians 1 and 2 is just a greeting. And so, I like to get to the meat of the matter. And so, I'm going to uh, not record the greeting. You can read the greeting for yourself, but there's no lesson there. I mean, I read it all, and I look for just, is there one is there one lesson? Is there one takeaway verse? Well, in 1 Corinthians, my takeaway verse is the last verse, verse 24. Not for that we have dominion over your faith, but are helpers of your joy, for faith ye stand. I've really learned a lot reading all about Paul's life, Paul's journey, his missionary journey, about the people he came upon. I mean, it's been, it's, it's so much more rewarding to really have immersed myself in everything that I could find on the life of, of the Apostle Paul. And it it really helps me as I'm reading his, you know, his letters, his lesson, and understanding how in his day he's addressing the people of that day, especially the people in Corinth. And so in Corinth, what's happening here, by the time we get to uh, epistle, you know, chapter three, let me just read the last verse in chapter two, how Paul will end the greeting. And then we're going to get to the meat of the matter in chapter three. So let me read uh, 2 Corinthians 2, 17. For we are not as many which corrupt the word of God, but as of sincerity, but as of God. In the sight of God, we speak. In the sight of God, speak we in Christ. Now, what's happening here has Paul has become, I guess I would say, um, they've actually has become ashamed to say that he is the leader of the church or he is their leader. So the people of Corinth, they, they because they operate from a worldview, their culture is all about status and um, performers. You know, they, they love great speakers. It's all about the sophist. And so the church is trying to be at the same status as the sophist and they're only looking for people who can speak really eloquently and that's not paul they think paul you know they they heard paul they've been you know paul's been sending letters and actually this is actually the fourth letter their two letters were lost so even though we call it second corinthians it's the fourth letter to them and he's trying to reconcile with these people and the people are like every time you send us a letter you're poor you're, you're doing manual labor you're suffering you're, you're unimpressive, you know, as a speaker, as a teacher, as a leader. They're literally ashamed of Paul. And and so they're saying that, you know, we have our, our speakers here, Apollos and some others, whatever they are. It's like we have, you know, very eloquent, um, high status speakers here running the church. We don't need the words of Paul. And so the church is saying what little church is still following Paul. They're saying, look, the church is asking for some, um, what they're going to call here in chapter three, they're looking for letters, epistles of commendation um, from you. So the, they're literally asking for an example. In our day, we would call, they're, they're asking for his degree. They're asking for what proof do you have? What kind, what kind of letters, what kind of, you know, show us something that tells us you're an apostle that you were a, an apostle uh, by Jesus Christ. They're looking for proof because that's their worldview. That's the culture. Uh, they're looking for Paul to prove his status as an apostle because to them, you know, the fact that he's always doing manual labor and that he's always poor, suffering, persecuted in jail, you know, they, 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 they that does not fit their worldview. That does not fit their, um, as, you know, status, uh, what, what's the word I want? You know, your, their status, period. And so that's what's going on here. And Paul's going to be addressing that kind of uh, simple-minded, vain. Talk about vanity of vanities. That's really what Paul is addressing here, is vanity of vanities of these people. And he, he loves them. He, he's, he's, he's trying to reconcile with how perverted and corrupt it has gone in the way of sophists in that day. All right, so 2 Corinthians, let's read all the three. Do we begin again to commend ourselves or need? We, as some others, epistles of commendation to you or letters of commendation from you? Ye are our epistle written in our hearts, known and read of all men. 
For as much as ye are manifestly declared to be epistles of Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the Spirit of the living God, not in tables of stone, but in fleshly tables of the heart. Paul's trying to, to say, look, we have the Holy Spirit in us. What we are teaching you, what we are giving you, is the Holy Spirit. That's not something you write down on a piece of paper. That's not something you carve into stone, you know, as in the days of Moses. And he'll use Moses now. He's going to use Moses and Jeremiah 31 and Ezekiel 36 as examples. Okay, let's read that. Starting in four. And such trust have we through Christ to Godward. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. Do you, do you see that? They're, they're looking for a man-made, um, you know, something man-made to prove that Paul is of God. And Paul is correcting their thinking. Who also hath made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter kill, but the Spirit give life. But if the ministration of death, written and engraven in stone, was glorious, so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses, for the glory of his countenance, which the glory was to be done away. So in other words, there is the glory or the spirit in the days of Moses. That was temporary. That was fleeting. That's going to go away because Jesus Christ is who brings in the actual Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit never fades and never goes away. So that's what he's, he's talking about here is you knew the glory of Moses. That was a fleeting spirit. That was something that was, you know, for an appointed time for Moses. But Jesus Christ brings the living Holy Spirit in forever and ever. Amen. Can I get an amen, brother? How shall not the ministration of the Spirit be rather glorious? For if the ministration of condemnation be glory, much more doth the ministration of righteousness succeed in glory. You see, it's all about education. These are Greek philosophers, and they're trying to turn it back to the Greek way, worldview, culture type of life. So I hope I'm explaining that well enough. For even that which was made glorious had no glory in this respect by reason of the glory that excel. For if that which is done away was glorious, much more which remain is glorious. Seeing that we have such hope, we use great plainness of speech. So Paul is pointing out, yes, I'm simple. My speech is simple. I'm not eloquent. You know, it's, it's, it's simple speech, but it comes from the living Holy Spirit that only Jesus Christ Having resurrected, he's still addressing the resurrection here. This is still something. This is the talk of the day. So once we understand what all Paul is trying to address at the same time with the many different mindsets that these people are having, he understands what's going on very, very well. Titus and Timothy are keeping him, you know, um, in, in the loop. So that's he's, he's kind of going around. He's addressing all of the concerns. And not as Moses, which put a veil over his face, that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished. But their minds were blinded, for until this day remain, the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. You see what saying there? There was that temporary glory that Moses had that was taken away, and then there, there will be no glory, there will be no Holy Spirit. That's what Jesus Christ came to give us is the Holy Spirit. And now we have it forever and ever. It's available to us 24-7, 365 days a year. It's always there. How do you keep it in you? Read the Word. Let's finish 2 Corinthians 3 with verse 15 to 18. But even unto this day when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Now, the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. That's my takeaway. The best verse out of 2 Corinthians 3, right there. Let's repeat it. 17. Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, with open face beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the spirit of the Lord. And all God's people said, stay in the word.